Hey guys, we're here in my office. Dr. John Mark, Dr. Dr. Steven Dr. here. Steven. If you're watching this, then uh, you are likely a physical therapist that's interested in um, what we're doing. So this is a, an hour that we have uh, blocked off in the schedule um, every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And um, so we've been doing this um, really since the existence of uh, Simply Physio. Uh, to further our um, our understanding of how we can help people of, uh, as part of the mentorship program, uh, but also just our dedication to helping our clients get uh, better is that we have a weekly um, a set of time that we can go over cases, uh, review techniques, um, and problem solve together to give our clients uh, the absolute best. So we wanted to give you a little insider uh, view, uh, and this is the first time we've recorded it, so give us a little grace if... Um, Things get cut off. Um, so, but uh, yeah, our plan is to record these uh, at least once a month uh, to give you a perspective of what we do, but also hopefully uh, that you can learn a thing or two uh, to take back into uh, your clinics uh, as well. So, uh, I'm going to go over a case uh, that I just started recently. I'm going to um, give you guys a little snapshot. Um, Dr. Steven doesn't know much about this case either, so he's in the same position that you guys are. Well, I'll be a, a pop quiz at the end. <laughs> All right, so your continued um, employment. Yeah, you can it depends on this. Right? Yeah, you're above. All right, so excited. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll heal them for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I um, had a patient. Um, she's in her uh, mid 40s. She's a nurse. Um, and let me. I'm gonna cut off the air. So the volume. Uh, all right, so I was saying, yeah, so she's in her, her mid-40s. Uh, we just started her care uh, two weeks ago, had her evaluation. Uh, so she came in, um, kind of interesting history. She's, um, she's coming in with uh, chronic neck pain, but very specific to the SEM. So, I mean, she, um, she's a nurse, so she has some medical background. I think she even said, like, you know, I'm having SEM pain, which is kind of odd. Uh, and she, you know, she showed, you know, traced uh, the SEM as well, just on the right side. Um, she um, has um, had a MVA 2015, um, but she didn't really remember having neck pain like after that. Um, she also had a brain tumor in 2010 with a, a craniotomy as she had osteocytoma. Um, you know, just a, just a little interesting uh, thing there too. Um, her neck pain started in 2018, really no mechanism of injury, uh, has gotten worse since then. Uh, and it's pretty much all on the right side. I mean, occasionally on the, on the left, but um, predominantly the right side. Uh, she doesn't have any headaches, uh, denies numbness and tingling, reports some jaw TMJ pain also on the right side uh, when opening her mouth, um, brushing her teeth, some difficulty sleeping, especially sleeping on the right side. Uh, she had chiropractic treatment, uh, 10 to 15 visits, uh, really no relief, um, so they were doing um, adjustments, and then um, so I'm like doing some sort of massage gun right there to the side of her neck. That was pleasant. Um, so um, and really did not see any um, relief from those treatments. Uh, she's been managing with ibuprofen, uh, and um, that's been her just man management uh, strategy. Things that aggravate uh, her symptoms: gardening, pulling weeds, vacuuming. Sneezing, um, she said pain starts early in the day, and as soon as she gets up and um, just starts moving around, it starts getting it just gets worse. Um, daily, it'll get up to a seven. It's pretty regular for her to um, yeah be up there at a seven. When she came in, it was at a four. She does have times when she doesn't have any pain, um, and then yeah, really just um, no other areas that she uh, mentioned as far as pain going on at uh, the point. Uh, so uh, that's really her subjective history. And any questions? I don't know if there's anything that brought up that. Yeah, one thing um, I would like to know: whenever she doesn't have pain, what is she doing? Or do you know? When yeah, most of the time she has pain. I think it's yeah. like when she wakes up. At first, she doesn't have like it. It comes on very like as soon as she gets going, okay. it's coming on. Gotcha. Um, and even just her when she first came into the clinic, her like. You could just tell she was one of those that was in pain. She just looked like she was having just this aggravating neck pain. And she, her head was actually a little bit turned uh, in the way that you would expect with SEM tightness, almost like a uh, torticollis, like um, like a, a you know mild torticollis. Mm -hmm. And I, don't know if, you know, I did a little research. I mean, is, 
adult torticollis. Is there any? Is there such thing as a tor adult torticollis? Uh, yeah. I couldn't find anything. Yeah. Um, but um, but it, it's. I mean, she had a little bit of kind of that head tilt uh, rotation. Um, you know, SCM tone, um, like a kind of torticollis type mm -hmm. pace. Um. So yeah, any other questions, subjective question, I can get into uh, objective history. And, and you said she'd been to Cairo, has she ever been to PT? Uh, never, never, never been to PT. Okay. Nope. Um, all right, get an objective. That's good enough for me. All right, so um, we looked at her jaw opening. Uh, she had a mild deviation and pain uh, towards the right side. Her jaw deviated, uh, more of a C curve, uh, so towards the side of her um, SCM pain. Um, a little bit limited with arm arm elevation um, there on the right. Uh, trunk rotation also limited with some pain there to the right. Um, and then uh, neck, uh, active range of motion. Uh, she had pain with uh, flexion, extension, uh, and she was um, limited with both, uh, you know, 50, 60% range um, with both of those. Um, side flexion more limited to the left, so going away from the pain uh, versus the right. Um, and then she was a little bit more limited with rotation to the right. So again, um, um, that, yeah, that makes sense there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. crosses there. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it fit, uh, again, fit that pattern of the SEM. Um, uh, no history of numbness of tingling, mild tones, dermatones, all really look normal. Um, didn't camp out there that much. Um, she had um, fairly good main and muscle tests, a little bit of weakness in uh, shoulder and abduction, uh, but no real pain. Uh, looked into um, special tests, deep neck flexor tests. About three seconds, her neck started sh shaking. Uh, stopped the test about 10 seconds. Uh, had pain with it too. Um, palpation, um, she has severe tenderness and tone um, of the SEM. I mean, it was just, uh, I don't know if I'd ever felt like a different side to side. And oftentimes you'll check the you know, upper trap, it seems mm -hmm. like, yeah, it feels a little tighter. You know, it was, I was like, you know, just started to touch it. It was like, man, that thing is mm -hmm. just like locked down. Um, and this is, you know, her resting, um, you know, at least trying to rest with her head on the pillow. Um, and that thing was just in this um, chronic, almost like spasm, just tonic um, type of state. Um, mild tenderness, upper trap, levator um, areas as well. Um, you know, some stiffness in the neck. It was, you know, um, as far as just some joint assessment. Um, so that's pretty much covered her objective, um, what we got through with her objective. I've seen her two other times since. Um, but that was um, kind of where we started with uh, objective. So um, I'd like to, uh, with with that being in mind, um, what kind of what either questions or where would you potentially head with um, looking at some treatments? Yeah, um, well, one thing too that I like to look at specifically with the neck more than anything is the the active versus passive. So I don't know if you check like full passive when you kind of compare the two. Yeah, um, um, I can't remember if I did or not. Um, Sometimes um, I don't necessarily document that, that for the right. neck as well. Um, so, um, Cause that, that, that kind of leads into my treatment. Yeah, a little well, bit to start. Yeah, what we did at first, we looked to see is um, we, we did either, I don't know if it was the first day or the second day, but mm -hmm. um, we looked to see supine passive. Mm -hmm. um, and um, she just had that, like, almost any type of um, work to that part of the neck was mm -hmm. just. It was her pain was just ramping up, mm -hmm. like just very like high sense that we talked yeah, about, like yeah. sensitivity, um, the nature of it. It was just mm -hmm. it seemed it was very irritable, mm -hmm. um, and um, and and I was uh, I don't want to go into much more. Um, but I thought I would just kind of wonder some yeah. of your other questions or thoughts. Yeah, um, and I can tell you what I was you know my main thing I was trying to right look at. Did you bring it to her attention that like when she's resting on the pillow, like do you feel that tension? you're you're holding yeah she, i mean she feels it she feels it all the time yeah okay yeah yeah um i guess my first thought would be you know reduce that tension right if yeah, you're doing sure. any kind of passive motion even if that's kind of still 
like preventing any kind of motion and movement. You need yeah. to so we gotta reduce that tension. Yeah, yeah. ramp it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, so so now the question is, is like, all right, like, what's the best way to do it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, how are we gonna get to that? Yeah, I know there's multiple different ways, and depending on you know your guys' beliefs and philosophies with any type of manual therapy. Um, my first go-to with, again, with her high sensitivity, which would be using some type of touch to kind of downregulate that sensitivity. Um, you know, even light, light, just kind of, hey, this is what um, pressure feels like, and this is not supposed to be painful. So just starting with very, just kind of light, even just surface rubbing kind of thing along, along that muscle belly. Yeah. That's where I would go to start to kind of decrease that, and however she responds to that, just kind of, add a little bit more and more there to it sure yeah so um and you know even during the assessment piece it was one of those where you know when i'm just trying to get a uh, understanding of what's wrong mm-hmm. with this muscle like that even that level was ramping her up okay so then um, you gotta go somewhere else <laughs> right so that's i mean that's kind of part of it too is yeah. like man i she was kind of one of those cases that like man i just don't know if i can work directly on that area yeah. um if an assessment of some soft mm-hmm. tissue assessment has already just ramped, ramped it up. up. So yeah, so the, I guess the next thing I would do would be uh, if you can't if you can't go away from it because it's tight, you can't touch it because it's too sensitive. What does shortening it feel like? Yeah, that's the only other thing you can do. That yeah. work work a totally different body region. Right. Okay. Just, you know, most people in this case, you know, that's um, or it's just inherently that they've tried to stretch it. Mm-hmm. Right. Like something hurts, then it's just human nature is like, oh, we gotta stretch it. Right. Hamstring hurts, stretch it even right. you can, you know, bring your leg all the way over your head, like, gotta stretch it, if it hurts, that's how you get it better, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's, that's what I would like to do, um, too, is, um, is, okay, like, this thing is just super tonic state, how can we relax it, right? Um, can I get it in a shortened position, you know, and what is, how does it respond if I just put it in a short position? So, um, so we did that laying down, um, you know, side bend her head, rotate her head, even look to, you know, see if, um, you know, bring, you know, shoulder up, just early get in a short position. Um, there, um, supine really didn't do much. Mm. Like it was still like very tonic. Mm. Um, and, um, so, so that was the first thing I looked at Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, it was still like not, not (laughs) giving up. Mm. Is that, um, yeah, I don't know if you checked shin positioning, like in that position too, or played around with any more of that or just um, just didn't really tolerate it much. Yeah. I mean, she just, um, it didn't like, I played around a few of those positions to see if, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, how we respond, just get in a short position. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, she didn't see much of a change that I was really happy with. Okay. So, um, so kind of struck out there a little bit, right? That's kind of what I did, I did like we strike out sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, this is this works with a lot of people, but not with everybody. So then we always have to have like a um, back other plan B, right? <laughs> right. What's our next pitch? Um, I mean, you would assume that they'd be their most relaxed state in supine, but I guess you can check and see the position and see if, you know, get them in some type of position seated i guess and see how you respond with that yeah um so um we did that we did get there i i, I looked a little bit more of some kind of pnf contract relax mm-hmm. is what i did supine okay. um first is like hey can we you know what if we get um you know you can go into it you can go to away from it you know mm-hmm. but you can you know i tried both right it's like hey can we get an antagonist relaxation mm-hmm. of the agonist you know with some sort of resisted side bending mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's almost like just the more we're doing, just, it was just continue just to like ramp it up, ramp it up. Like there's not really any improvement. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's kind of where we got off on the table. Um, and so, um, any, before any thoughts kind of from that point, um, after you sit up or yeah, so then we sat back up and it's like, okay, like what I'm doing with like kind of my hand, soft tissue, mm-hmm. position, contract, relax, at least lying down, like, we're not seeing much change here at this mm-hmm. point. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, hey, I want to get um, something. I want to get something where she can start working on something to see some sort of relief, you know, and, and part of it is, you know, want her to buy into mm-hmm. the fact that, um, that we can help her. 
right. and show her um, that you know evil can make a you know small change. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, yeah. Um, so I don't know if you went through this route, but something that as I was um, hearing you talk, um, I like to use a lot of visual feedback, and I've done this before. I think when I was telling you about this other patient I had, older gentleman with his head positioning. He had no idea that his head was in that position. Yeah. And I know um, that's kind of the same with her, you know. Her head's um, exactly. head, like when she's down, it's it's off. And um, I usually tell them, okay, this is straight, just so that you know. Exactly, yeah, and get that feedback um, because you know constant positioning in a certain position can just irritate, right? And so um, I know it's not necessarily like decreasing something at the moment, but making that connection of hey, if you continue to have your head in a shortened position, it's going to shorten that muscle, but yeah. that's kind of a side note there. Something else that I would have kind of brought out um, using that mirror feedback yeah. thing there. Yeah. Um, but as far as sitting up, um, next thing going to, I mean, I would see in sitting if she had any ability to kind of do any kind of retraction. Um, I'm assuming she would over recruit the SCM, but. Um, yeah, and that's what, usually what I would have with, you know, look at that movement for general like neck pain. Mm-hmm. But you know, my one thought was, um, okay, so that, that's going to be lengthening the SEM, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and is that what I want to do? And maybe we can come back to it um, at some point. But that's why I held off at least on her first visit of yeah. really doing too much like a chin tuck, yeah, with either over you know recruitment of it or um, just putting that in a lengthened, more lengthened mm-hmm. position. Um, so um, I guess next sitting up, I would go to. Um, Personally, I would look at side bending. Um, one direction was was not Her, painful. Yeah, so she, um, at least in my notes, um, and I thought she had more pain than what I have put down here, but she definitely had pain with uh, flexion extension. Most, you know, I sat her back up with um, most limited and painful into just cervical extension. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can tell you what I like, yeah. kind of my thought process is, okay, like, hey, this is our first visit, like, my hands on someone's head, like that's just, especially the head is like one of those kind of uh, sensitive areas where it's not um, regular that somebody has somebody holding their head. Mm-hmm. And is there a piece of this where um, just with me doing anything is like she's not able to fully kind of relax and let go? Is that part of that here where maybe at this point um, she would do better with some self guided? Movements, mm-hmm. right? Where she's um, doing some sort of um, pressure. So, um, so that was my thought of like, okay, let me take like everything I've done with my hands mm-hmm. is really just seem to like not help, definitely not help, um, and looks like it's kind of just making it worse. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you know, I just wanted to look at like where's where can we make the most improvement? Um, you know, because where she most limited and painful is like cervical extension. So it's like let's let's just check on that. And so um, I had her just do like a self, almost like PNF, whatever you call it, um, movement where like, hey, can you support your head? Um, and, and first just do a little bit of like an isometric, just, just mild isometric contraction mm-hmm. um, to see. And I'm actually try that um, on a pillow too with her just, you know, just doing a, a light isometric coming down, uh, which didn't, uh, again, didn't help. But um, had her use her hand sitting up. And um, she's, she's okay with that. And then I, what I wanted to see is like, hey, can you give a little bit of pressure um, back into your hand, maintain that pressure, and then go into um, extension? And it was one of those like where she did it and she went back significantly further mm-hmm. and her pain was not hardly there at all. And mm-hmm. you know, she did it once and was like, that, that one yeah. of those looks, right? Like, wow, what, what just happened? Mm-hmm. And um, uh, you know, just explain to her like, hey, we're having to re-change how these muscles are adapting, and sometimes we gotta create an environment that's um, whether it's be it feels safer because mm-hmm. you're have some support with the hand, and it's you know you get some other muscles that are kicking in, and it just creates some environment of safety to allow your head to move more freely. Mm-hmm. So we did it once, but then um, you know just talked her through that on the hand position and um, and she did really well with it and um, and then um, so after I had her doing you know some sort of PNF mulligan whatever you want to call it 
some um, some sort of self um, influenced you know assisted movement pattern um, significantly better. Um, my next step is like okay, so now if she's done that with her hands, how does it now look um, without that support? Mm-hmm. Um, so um, again, significantly improves um, with her um, extension um, coming back without her hands. So she left. Thankfully, we found. Get out of here. <laughs> found something is like all right. With um, you know at least um, a, 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 at least a level of, of buying and seeing uh, that we made a change, and that's you know something that um, you know we tell all clients you know to use like the model that we prescribe to is we want to we want to see changes in the clinic, right? And we have time that we can you know test some things, do some treatment, and then see their effect, and. Um, we're um, you know thankful to have you know our full session where we can work with them so that we can do that, um, so that they can see it an impact too. Uh, but also for me to know is like okay, I can take this information while we prepare for her next yeah. um, session. Um, so um, so I mainly just had her working on that yeah. um, between awesome. that appointment and her next. So I don't know with with her responding to something like that. I mean what I don't know, what do you um, clinically reasoning or just kind of using that into like the next treatments yeah does that help guide maybe the direction that you may ha- head with yeah her? yeah um, kind of like what you mentioned earlier you're with that technique in my opinion you're creating that stability factor you know um, there's more control of the, the head and movement because you're recruiting right you're recruiting muscles as well as I do think there's like a pain science element to that, right? Which we know with PNF, if you get um, muscles contracting in a position or in a direction that you're not used to, it's almost like it decreases that threat associated with that movement yeah. that she's had for that long of time. Yeah. Um, so I would just play into that and feed into that and just keep going with those types of um, isometric contractions if she's getting like a roadblock go the other way or try that same way now that you've kind of gotten through that first little hurdle of everything's irritated and then eventually I mean I would revisit every time hey how much pressure can I put on that area that's a good way to gauge how successful those isometric exercises are yeah um, so I guess it would, for me it'd be kind of going back and forth okay are we to the point where we can directly interact with it and then um, give them you know keep building to that what we found out of the first day yeah yeah, awesome. So we're going to go over some techniques, um, some further techniques that uh, that we use like in with this type of patient model. One other um, caveat: so usually, um, you know, some I use a lot of dry needling to reduce tension with her. It was kind of those cases like, and it was just so limited and so irritated. Like I think I even mentioned to her that hey, this is a treatment that I usually do, but I I think it's going to just make things worse. I don't think you're ready for that. Maybe you know later further down the line. Um, and the last visit, um, she came in, um, so she's still, um, still very tonic. I mean, still had a ways to go, but, um, I drink, I, um, dry needled her left SCM. Uh, I can't say I've ever intentionally done that, but I told her, like, I've seen, you know, treatment oftentimes to the opposite side, to the better side, um, you know, for whatever reason, neurophysiological, you know, just, um, uh, pain science, whatever you want to say, I've, you know, seeing some, um, some improvements over working, you know, just the good side. And so, um, so I talked her through it. She's, she was game. And I was like, so I'm interested to see how she comes back next time after, um, needling her left SCM, um, with that. So maybe we could use that technique yeah. again in the near future. Um, but, um, I know you do some like supine, mm-hmm. like pain out. Do you yeah. want to, um, show me that and I'll yeah. show you some good stuff I've been looking yeah. at. Yeah, yeah, excellent. All right, so let's see if we can get this camera. You may have to. Um, feel free to play around with that angle there. Yeah, I think there's a better angle. So one thing that I like to commonly use um, is a type of PNF. Um, I don't really go into the specifics of contract relax or 
whatever I just kind of call it all like a PNF technique. Um, so I kind of alluded to earlier where um, I like to take a look at active versus passive motion. And that really tells me a lot whenever we're starting to work um, with um, motion in the cervical spine. So let's say, you know, Dr. John Mark here, he was um, actively only getting, you know, halfway to full range of motion. But I sit him down and he's getting this much motion. Obviously, that's a huge, huge mismatch there. Um, let's say the other side was a little bit better. You know, he's going 75% of full motion. Um, but again, I can get him passively. I like, to, I like to take a moment and talk with the patient of like, do you feel that difference between what I can do for you and what you can do for you. Most of the time they're like, yeah, that's a big difference. And then I make another um, comment of, and then whenever I do it for you, there's you know, very little discomfort at all, except when I get to the very end, when you're doing it, it hurts throughout the whole motion. Yes, I see that too. So again, kind of like what I just alluded to, I like to use these types of techniques to almost reduce um, the tension that you're gonna experience at end range. We know that they have this much motion available, right? The spine's not limiting them to get to this point. Um, there's just something adaptively going on within the muscle. So um, I'll use one or two things. If they're very low um, irritability level, I'll actually have them. Um, so I'll get them to that end range point, maybe a little bit before, and then all I'll have them do is I'll just- They're active in range. Yes, they're active in range. Will you have them on the pillow actually actively rotate or just? I will, so I'll get to like close to that point and yeah. then um, I'll just kind of tap them on the side of the forehead mm -hmm. and then just say, can you rotate into this thumb? And then they'll kind of rotate towards the right. I'll give them some resistance. I'll say, keep going and then relax and then they'll relax and I'll kind of actively or I'll passively take them to a little bit past that point and then I'll tap them again, go again, rotate to the right, keep going, keep going, keep going, excellent, and then relax, and then I'll kind of go a little bit further past that, and I just keep working that, honestly, until the next thing you know, they're activating muscles in a new range that they haven't activated before. Now, let's say they can't tolerate that because that happens as well. I'll do the same idea, I'll get them rotated, to that position that I'm perceiving is their, their end range actively. And now this happened to be the other way because usually you can tolerate that a little bit more. So I'll tap my thumb on the other side and say, okay, can you rotate to the left into this thumb? They'll rotate away. Keep going, keep going, keep going. How much, how much effort do you tell them to give? I say, because um, yeah, with isometrics it's hard to gauge how much effort. I yeah. just say go about 50%. Um, okay. you're not, I say you're not trying to crank on your head or anything like that. It's just a nice, gentle ramp up of time, um, and then relax. Obviously, if it produces any kind of discomfort, just tell me or stop, and then we can modulate it a little bit. But um, it's a real gentle, nice, easy um, um, manual technique that I like to do. And then next thing you know, afterwards, you should see a pretty decent change in motion passively yep. and actively, right? And then you can um, simply have them either sit up or stay with their head um, on the pillow and then you know, try to improve that motion or see what their motion is at, at that point. Yeah, but um, one, know, one other um, thing I haven't used for that te this technique, but um, something to even try if they're very high at sens um, sensitive level, mm -hmm. is just have them look with their eyes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like, I'll do that with the OA technique, with yeah. the OA rotation. Just right. Tell them to look back with their eyes, and they'll get um, whether it's the, some sort of ocular motor reflex, or um, or I mean, they'll get a light contraction there too. So that's yeah. something else uh, to try there. It's like the fingers. Down. Yep. Um, so then, I um, want to show you one other pattern here that um, we're going to do with this patient here next visit. I'll try both of these. Um, so if you um, want to sit up there, Dr. Steven, lay down. Or uh, go ahead and sit up. So I know everybody's familiar with some of the PNF patterns, um, but um, usually I just do them laying down with the shoulder. It's kind of the main time I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm doing D1, D2 with the shoulder um, for shoulder strengthening. But um, so I was looking at some other things that we can do since she just responded really well to some of that 
active assistant, muscle energy, you know, type stuff. Cause like maybe just kind of heading into some PNF type, you know, work and with what she was doing. Yeah. Um, so um, let's um, let's see here. What if you come here to the side so I can stand? Uh, all right. All right. So um, so the PNF pattern um, with. Um, and we could, you know, we could try a few things here. You know, it could even work, um, even like the arm. Let's say I want to just get some um, some shoulder engagement. You know, I could do it, you know, sitting where you know, you're coming up. Go ahead and come up into that pattern there, uh, and then go ahead and pull back down. Uh, all right, come back up. Come back on. I, I thought I didn't know you were going to be a crank on. All right, so. We could do a few things um, here, so we're getting the shoulder going. Now, what you know, I could see is like, hey, with getting these shoulder muscles muscles going, whether it be just a neurophysiological kind of effect of concentrate on that. Can you follow your head with your hand? Just yep, there you go. But we're getting that shoulder work there, so this would be an option just to see. Again, getting some recruitment of the scapular muscles. Does that free up actually your ability to move? through the head, right? So um, we can look at that, you know, both ways, that's good there. Um, and then, so we can see um, the head pattern, right? So I could then take um, her through um, just the head pattern where first to see if it's comfortable, um, can I passively take you kind of in this pattern here? So I want you to get a feel for that because then um, what I'll do is I'll take you through uh, like a resisted pattern of that, right? Mm -hmm. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I have to change my um, hand position here. Um, and um, usually do this around the chin. She has some jaw stuff going on, so just have to be mindful of that, that we're not doing too much around the jaw. But um, with, um, so go ahead and come in that down position. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of resistance coming up. All right, and then I'm switching my hands and you're pulling back. There you go. And then come back up, and then come back, and then come back up. How's that feel there? That not too much. Interesting. Feels good. Feels fine. All right. And so we could even, you know, take keep going further, a little further there to that end range. So you can look all the way down towards the armpit. There you go. Just switching back and forth. You know, it's it's a little easier I find or. My tendency is to do a little bit more pressure on the jaw, um, but I could um, really emphasize, um, just because I don't like pushing too much on the jaw, is um, trying to get a little bit more resistance from the head. It's just, um, I think the angle of the jaw tends to influence my um, um, pressure mm -hmm. to come more from the jaw, so you just have to think about the head. Yeah. So, uh, you wanna try that? Yeah, try that? yeah, I like that. All right, guys, um, so that was, uh, we're gonna,